Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to discover the power of profiles in Lightroom Classic. So a profile is just a set of instructions that determines how the information in a photo is processed. Profiles are non-destructive, and they can be changed at any time without any loss of quality. And because profiles can use color lookup tables to remap colors and tones, they can help establish a neutral starting point or apply creative effects to your images. First, we'll look at some of the profiles designed specifically to work with RAW files, and then we'll look at some creative profiles that we can apply to additional file types. Now, the default profile for RAW files is Adobe Color. If the image that you're working on isn't set to Adobe Color by default, most likely you have one of two things happening. Either you're working on a file in a different file format, for example, a JPEG file, in which case the profile will just say Color, because you can't apply a raw profile to a JPEG file because it's not a raw file. Or you might be working with a legacy file, in which case you will see the previously embedded profile, which you can choose to change at any time. So Adobe Color was designed to be a great starting point for any raw file. And the goal of this profile is to render a relatively neutral baseline image that closely matches the original colors and tones in the original scene. When we choose the Adobe Monochrome profile, or when we click the black and white button, the profile is automatically set to Adobe Monochrome. The Adobe Monochrome profile is designed to be the best starting point for any black and white image. And this profile slightly shifts the colors in the original image as they're converted to grayscale. It brightens the warmer colors and it darkens down the cooler colors. It also adds a small amount of contrast and like Adobe Color, it has a lot of headroom for you to edit the image. Now, there are additional raw profiles that were created for starting points for specific types of images, which can be accessed via the drop down menu or by clicking on the profile browser. The first two, Adobe Color and Adobe Monochrome are the defaults that we just discussed. Now we can preview a profile by just hovering the cursor above it, but if we want to apply the profile, we need to click on it. As soon as I click on a profile, we can see the changes that it's made to the image in the preview area, as well as in the histogram. Now every raw image must have a profile and can only have one profile at a time. So clicking on another profile is going to remove the one that was previously applied. Now let's take a look at how the rest of these raw profiles differ from the defaults. So the Adobe Landscape Profile adds a bit more saturation to all of the colors in an image, and it enhances the blues and greens. While this profile adds a slight amount of contrast to the overall image, it also helps maintain details by slightly compressing the highlight and shadow values in scenes with significant contrast. Adobe Neutral reduces color saturation as well as contrast, rendering a flatter, lower contrast version of the image. It's designed to give you the most headroom for editing your files in post-processing. Now Adobe Portrait was tailored especially for portrait images. Let's select this photo for a moment. And if we compare the portrait to the landscape profile, we can see that the portrait profile has a slightly more gentle tone curve and it renders skin tones really nicely. All right, let's return to the landscape image. And Adobe Vivid adds vibrance and contrast while still rendering natural skin tones. If you see additional profiles here, like we can see the Adobe Standard, it's because that was the default profile in previous versions of Lightroom Classic and I have some images in my catalog that have been assigned the Adobe Standard Version 2 profile. All right, the next group of profiles are camera matching profiles. These were created by Adobe, and they are designed to match the preset styles that can be set up using the menus on the camera. So if you've set the style and you want to match that look and feel, or if you simply like one of the looks, that you find with these profiles, you can select one of them. Now, because the style options differ among camera manufacturers, this list of profiles will change depending on your camera. All right, the next set are the legacy profiles, 
and they're included in order to maintain backwards compatibility when working with legacy files. Now, if they're not showing, then you can click on the plus icon and choose to manage profiles. We can use the checkbox next to the profile to hide or show different groups of profiles. For now, I'll go ahead and hide the legacy profiles because I'd prefer to use the newer ones. Now below this divider, there are several groups of creative profiles, and these profiles are designed to apply more of a stylistic effect to an image rather than set a neutral starting point. And they can be applied to RAW files as well as JPEGs and Photoshop files, TIFF files, and PNG files. In the artistic category, we can see that these profiles are designed to be much more dramatic and they typically have a much stronger color shift. When you apply a creative profile, you also have an amount slider that you can use to fine tune the intensity of the profile. All right, the creative black and white profiles have more dramatic interpretations of the original images. Now, some of these are going to increase contrast while others will decrease the contrast. Some will limit the dynamic range by lifting the blacks, while others will emulate the effects of using color filters with film. All right, let's take a look at the modern profiles. These were profiles that were designed to create unique effects that fit in with current photography styles. And finally, we have the vintage profiles that were designed to replicate the effects of analog imagery. All right, as you find profiles that you like, you can click on the star icon in order to add them to your favorites. To remove them from your favorites, you would just click the star icon again. You can also preview your profiles larger, as well as by a list, and when you hover over the profile, you will see a preview. For now, let's set that back to grid. If we want to quickly expand or collapse all of our groups of profiles, we can right click next to the name of a group and then choose to expand all or collapse all. We can also jump directly to the manage profiles like we did by clicking the plus icon a moment ago, and we can choose to reset our hidden profiles. Now, as we're previewing our different profiles, we can hold down the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on Windows to temporarily disable the automatic previewing in the image area. This can be helpful for a quick before and after comparison when moving from one profile to another that aren't next to each other because Lightroom Classic won't preview the other profiles as you move your cursor over them. Then just release the Option key in order to see the difference between the two. If you want to import third-party profiles, you can click on the plus icon and choose to import profiles. Now to close the profile browser, we can either double click on a profile in order to apply it and close the browser, or we can simply choose close. Now that we added a profile as our favorite, we can quickly select it from the drop-down menu without having to use the browser. Now remember, a profile is just a starting point. It's independent from all of the other controls in Lightroom. Once you've applied a profile, you can still use any of the other sliders in any of the other panels to make additional modifications to your images. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.